This documentary, plus all of my existing documentaries, has been created for truth seekers. And there are many truth seekers because of inconsistencies they found within their Bible, which are not the result of translation issues. Before continuing, I want to make a very important point. People of all religions believe and know Satan is forever at work, attempting to influence a soul's daily behavior. But most do not realize he's been very active in other, less obvious ways. For instance, when Jesus told his disciples the meaning of the parable about a great treasure hidden in the field, he finished by saying, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. In addition, Apostle Peter, in chapter 8 of his epistle to Apostle James, which is in the Clementine homilies, wrote, Give the books of my preachings to our brethren, with the like mystery of initiation, that they may indoctrinate those who wish to take part in teaching. For if it be not so done, our word of truth will be rent into many opinions. And this I know, not as being a prophet, but as already seeing the beginning of this very evil. And these things some have attempted while I am still alive, to transform my words by certain various interpretations in order to the dissolution of the law, as though I also myself were of such a mind but did not freely proclaim it. But these men, professing, I know not how, to know my mind, undertake to explain my words, which they have heard of me, more intelligently than I who spoke them, telling their catechumens that this is my meaning, which indeed I never thought of. But if, while I am still alive, they dare thus to misrepresent me, how much more will those who shall come after me dare to do so? If one studies the Clementine homilies, they will learn that it contains numerous wicked one statements regarding changes being made to Jesus' doctrine. My past documentaries have addressed the modification and elimination of God's word and the doctrine Jesus gave to mankind as it applies to the King James Bible KJV. This documentary will address the modification and elimination of God's Word and the doctrine Jesus gave to mankind, as it applies to the King James Bible Revised Standard Version, RSV, and the New International Version, NIV. I will not go to the depths that I did when comparing the KJV to God's Word as Jesus taught it in His original doctrine, which is within the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. That comprehensive information is available in the Know Your Bible section of my website, rodcdavis.com. This documentary will address the changes to God's true word and Jesus' true doctrine recorded in the KJV as it compares to the doctrine recorded within the RSV and NIV. However, be that as it may, the differences I will point out to you between the KJV doctrine and the RSV and NIV doctrines will likely be more than enough for you to know that God's Word and His Son's doctrine in those versions have been damaged beyond belief. Most of this documentary will address the tampering within the RSV and NIV New Testament, but it will not address all of it because it would take hours to do so. However, before addressing the tampering issues within Matthew, I want to point out that the RSV and NIV Old Testament did not escape the author's negative editing. For example, the authors made an interesting change to Isaiah 7:14 within the RSV. The red section of the RSV states, a young woman, versus the gold section of the KJV, which states, a virgin. What's wrong with the fact that it states a young woman versus a virgin? The RSV connotes that any woman could give birth to Emmanuel, and not the special woman who did, the Virgin Mary, 
whom the Holy Spirit overshadowed when Joseph went to her, as commanded by the angel Gabriel. The next comparison I will make is between Daniel 3.25 within the RSV and NIV, as they apply to the KJV. The RSV and NIV versions state in the section highlighted in red, Son of the Gods, whereas the KJV section in gold states, Son of God. There is a huge difference between Son of the Gods and Son of God. Think about this. Didn't the pagans worship many gods? Could this modification be an open act to put additional pagan traditions into the Bible over and above those found in the KJV that were brought about by Constantine and the First Council in Nicaea 325 AD? That's all I'm going to address in the Old Testament. But if you conduct your own study, you will find that the RSV and NIV contain many negative Old Testament modifications, or if you will, eliminations. Matthew 13.51 of the RSV and NIV contain a major difference from the KJV that I want to address. When we read the KJV, the section in gold tells us his disciples recognized Jesus as being a deity when they said, Yea, Lord. Whereas the RSV and NIV versions have removed that status, when one considers and then realizes the importance of that elimination, the first question that should come to mind is, why? Next, I'm going to address Matthew 19, verses 16 and 17 within the KJV, as they compare to the RSV. First, let's compare the red section of the RSV, verse 16, to the gold section within verse 16 of the KJV. The red section in the RSV tells us Jesus' disciples called him teacher, which is defined as being a person whose occupation is teaching, while the gold section of the KJV makes it clear they called him master, which is defined as being a person who has general authority over others. What could be the reason the authors chose to remove the master status which is how Peter and all the other apostles address Jesus. Are they attempting to demean Jesus' importance within the New Testament? Now, let's take a look at the red section of the RSV, verse 17, and compare it to the section in gold of verse 17 in the KJV. The red section of the RSV states, Why do you ask me about what is good? while the section highlighted in gold of the KJV states, Why callest thou me good? There is a huge difference between the two. For the KJV makes it clear Jesus has declared his Father is far greater than him, while the RSV removes that aspect altogether. Why? It cannot be a translation issue, for that accounting within the Gospel of the Holy Twelve matches the KJV accounting detailed in this frame, which means the change was a decisive and deliberate act by the authors. Matthew 27, verse 35 of the KJV contains a statement which is the section in gold, They parted my garments among them. The statement, They parted my garments among them, fulfills the Psalm 22:17 prophecy highlighted in orange below. They parted my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. I'm sure you noticed the section in green of the KJV verse 35, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. And I'm sure you also noticed that it was not included in verse 35 of either the RSV or NIV. I must say that the elimination of the KJV statement in green that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, brings a huge question to mind. Why would the authors decide to remove the fact that the division of Jesus' garments had been done in fulfillment of Scripture? Jesus certainly made it clear through verses within the New Testament that he had come to fulfill Scripture, such as John 19, 28, 
highlighted in orange below. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Mark 15, verse 3 of the KJV, contains a statement which I highlighted in gold, but he answered nothing. And that statement is missing from the RSV and NIV. Why is the fact that statement is missing significant? It is a fulfillment of a prophecy, which is within Isaiah 53, 7, and highlighted in green. Yet he opened not his mouth. The question again comes to mind, why did the authors decide to remove a statement that fulfilled prophecy? Do they not want the reader to know that Jesus fulfilled prophecy? Mark 15, 27, 29 of the KJV contains more scripture that Jesus fulfilled, which is verse 27 that is highlighted in gold. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, And he was numbered with the transgressors. If one would take the time to read Mark 15, 27, 29 within the RSV, they will find that verses 27 and 29 are there. But that very important verse, verse 28, which is fulfillment of scripture, is missing. The scripture it fulfilled is highlighted in orange within Isaiah 53, 12. He was numbered with the transgressors. This is yet another Old Testament scripture Jesus fulfilled that has been eliminated. Why? What could the reason be for such an obvious elimination other than demeaning the importance of Jesus in the New Testament? Next, let's compare 1 John 4, 3, KJV, to 1 John 4, 3, within the RSV and NIV. Please note the section in gold of the KJV, which says, Christ is come in the flesh. Did Jesus not come in the flesh? Yes, he did. So why would that fact have been removed in the RSV and NIV? Since it does not state, Christ is come in the flesh, in my opinion, one must assume that the spirit of the Antichrist wrote the RSV and NIV. Who is the spirit of the Antichrist? Isn't it the wicked one, who Jesus mentioned in his parable regarding a great treasure hidden in the field? And let's not forget that Apostle Peter, within the Clementine homilies, also talked about the wicked one changing Jesus' doctrine. Next, I'm going to address Matthew 6, verse 13, within the KJV, RSV, and NIV. Please note the section highlighted in gold within the KJV. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. In my opinion, the only reason that statement would have been left out of the RSV and NIV is another overt effort to not exalt Jesus. After all, the authors have been removing from the New Testament testimony that proclaims Jesus fulfilled Old Testament prophecies, the fact that he is a deity, and they demoted him to a teacher from being a master. Next, let's compare Luke 11, verse 2 of the KJV, to the RSV and NIV versions. The gold sections within the KJV, our, which art in heaven, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth, are missing from the RSV and NIV versions. With our and which art in heaven missing, it could make one wonder whose father. However, when the authors remove thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth, they craftily eliminated from the Lord's prayer the need to obey God's commandments. Think about this. Who can benefit most from the removal of thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth? A soul or Satan? Next, let's compare Luke 11, verse 4 of the KJV to Luke 11, verse 4 within the RSV and NIV versions. The section highlighted in gold within the KJV, but deliver us from evil, has been removed from the RSV and NIV, which absolutely negates a very important aspect of the Lord's Prayer. 
Asking to be delivered from evil is extremely important, for evil can corrupt a person's soul, whereas temptation, if indulged, would have a very different impact. Think about it. Who would benefit most by a soul not asking God to deliver them from evil? The soul or Satan? Next, let's take a look at Luke 24, verses 39-41 within the KJV, as they compare it to the RSV. When one reads verse 39 in the RSV, they will find that the next verse is 41. Verse 40 is missing. Verse 40 of the KJV is highlighted in gold. And when he had thus spoken, he shewed them his hands and his feet. Is it important that this verse is missing? Maybe not. But the fact is, it is missing. Why? When a person reading the RSV finds the verse numbers suddenly go from 39 to 41, shouldn't it make them wonder what verse 40 might have said? The next comparison I will address is between John 6.33 of the KJV and John 6.33. 33 within the RSV. Please note the section in gold within the KJV, he which, versus the red section of the RSV, that which. The KJV makes it clear that Jesus, who came down from heaven, is the bread of God that gives life to the world, whereas the RSV leads one to think that God sent something down. But what? The bread? In addition, this is yet another verse in which Jesus' status as a deity has been removed. The section in gold of John 6, verse 47 within the KJV tells us, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. While the red section of John 6, verse 47 in the RSV says, He who believes has eternal life. Believes in what? Believes in eternal life? Because a soul believes in eternal life, does that entitle them to eternal life? It is my opinion that the red section of the RSV is misleading and ambiguous. The gold section of John 16.16 16, within the KJV, Because I go to the Father, conveys a very clear message. And since that wording is missing from the RSV and NIV, it makes it appear as though Jesus is going to play hide-and-seek. The orange section of verse 17 does state, and because I go to the Father, as it does in verse 17 of the KJV, but since because I go to the Father is missing from verse 16, the message conveyed is muddy and is not as easily understood as it is in the KJV. Next I'll address John 16, 23 in the KJV as it compares to the way it is written in the RSV. The section highlighted in gold within the KJV states, Ask the Father in my name, while the red section in the RSV states, If you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. They are two very different statements. The KJV makes it clear to ask the Father in Jesus' name while the RSV tells the reader it will be given in Jesus' name. That is a huge difference, and it certainly negates Jesus' statement in John 14, 6, which is highlighted in green below. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When one reads Acts 8, 36-38 within the KJV, and then compares it to Acts 8, 36-38 in the RSV, they will find that verse 37 is missing. In verse 37 of the KJV, which is highlighted in gold, the eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That statement, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is very significant. Let me give you something to think about. So far we have learned that the RSV authors eliminated Jesus' fulfillment of Old Testament scriptures, and now they've eliminated a statement that a person believes in Jesus. And more importantly, the declaration that Jesus is the Son of God. Once again, 
his status as a deity has been removed. Next, I will compare Romans 9, 5 within the RSV to the KJV. The RSV states in the red section, God who is over all. While the section highlighted in gold of the KJV states, the flesh Christ came, who is over all. There is a big difference in the message conveyed between the two. Verse 5 of the RSV has two separate sentences, and the way they were structured very effectively removed Christ's status as a deity. Now let's take a look at Romans 14.10 in the RSV as it compares to Romans 14.10 of the KJV. The section in red of the RSV tells us the judgment seat of God versus the gold section of the KJV which states the judgment seat of Christ. The authors of the RSV did away with the judgment seat of Christ, again effectively removing his status as a deity and further demeaning his importance within the New Testament. Why? Are these not tares, such as Jesus prophesied would be done by the children of the wicked one? The next verse in the RSV that I will compare with the KJV is verse 47 within 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The section in red of the RSV states, is from heaven, while the gold section of the KJV states, is the Lord from heaven. The authors, by stating as they did in the red section of verse 47, RSV, eliminated the fact that Jesus is Lord, a deity, and always has been. As he stated to the Jews in the section highlighted in orange within John 8:58 below, Before Abraham was, I am. You'll likely recall that Abraham was Abram in Genesis, the first book of the Old Testament, until God changed his name to Abraham in chapter 17. It is my opinion that there is only one reason the authors would make such a revision. It is a further effort to demean Jesus' importance within the New Testament. Matthew 17:21, which I've highlighted in gold within the KJV states, Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. If one takes the time to read Matthew 17, 21 in the RSV and NIV, they will find that it is missing, for the numbered verses go from 20 to 22. When the RSV authors removed that verse, they removed an important part of the lesson Jesus taught. For without that verse, the reader is convinced that faith alone, without prayer and fasting as Jesus taught, will make nothing impossible. Matthew 18:11 of the KJV, which is in gold, tells us, For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Whereas, if one checks the RSV and NIV, they will find that verses 10 and 12 are there, but verse 11 is missing. Did Jesus not come to save that which was lost by teaching sinners the laws they must follow to earn salvation? Yes, he did. So why did the authors of the RSV and NIV deem it necessary to eliminate that verse? The answer, it again eliminated his status as a deity and further demeaned his importance within the New Testament. Matthew 23:14 within the KJV reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. That is a powerful verse that places damnation on the Pharisees and scribes for performing as hypocrites. Yet if one looks for Matthew 23:14 in the RSV and NIV, they won't find it. You may recall that hypocrisy is something Jesus steadfastly preached against in the KJV. Could it be that the authors removed that verse, for they themselves are being hypocrites? Through their implementation of so many negative changes within the Bible, which drastically alter the truth? Mark 11.26 within the KJV states, But if ye do not forgive, 
neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. However, if one checks the RSV and NIV, they will find that verse 26 is missing. And it should not be, for it is driving a very important point home. If a soul does not forgive, neither will God forgive them. In my daily contact with people, I have found there are numerous Christians and Catholics who do not forgive and hold fast to a grudge. Each time I meet one of these people, I remind them their trespasses will be forgiven as they forgive trespasses made against them. The RSV and NIV contain many more omissions and significant modifications to God's Word and Jesus' doctrine, which are too numerous to mention. For to do so, this documentary video would be hours long. Many people who read the RSV and NIV versions of the King James Bible do so usually because they have been told they are easier to read. However, along with the ease of reading comes great deception. It has been proven the Old and New Testaments of the King James Bible, KJV, have been severely tampered with. But that severity pales when comparing it to the tampering that has been perpetrated upon God's Word and Jesus' doctrine and His status within the RSV and NIV, not to mention the extremely negative changes made to the Lord's Prayer within those versions. When taking that aforementioned information into consideration, the Bible you read really does make a difference. Comprehensive information regarding the indisputable evidence that proves severe tampering within the King James Bible KJV can be found in the Know Your Bible section of my website, rodcdavis.com. Thank you for listening, and as his humble servant, I call upon Almighty God through Christ Jesus to richly bless you and all whom you cherish. Amen and amen.